Thank you for appearing on The Bottom Line. Oh, I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. Let's talk about the fundamental issues, the substance, not the horse race, the, the, the issues that are involved. What is the fundamental difference between the economic policy of Romney and the economic policy of President Obama? Well, I think the fundamental difference is that Romney is more of a supply sider, as we say, uh, meaning that uh, he believes in small government, he believes that uh, uh, we need to, uh, to cut taxes and cut spending and balance the budget. The problem is you can't do all three. <laughs> and so you got to make some choices. And so uh, uh, Barack Obama is basically a Keynesian. I don't think he's ever publicly called himself that, but John Maynard Keynes was uh, you know, chief economist back in the Franklin Roosevelt days of the uh, New Deal during the, the Depression. And the uh, fundamental logic uh, was dur during a recession, the problem is there's not enough money in the economy. So the private sector is not producing enough. So to build the economy back up, the government needs to step in and put more money into it. So you have a lot of public spending to boost the economy until it gets back on its feet. And then the tax revenue raised will pay off the deficit that you've built up during the recession. Uh, that worked as, as recently as the 1990s. The uh, Bill Clinton uh, boom that uh, took off uh, uh, wiped out the deficit with all the tax revenue that came in. As soon as George W. Bush came in, he cut taxes, uh, and uh, particularly on, on the upper income brackets, uh, which is the exact opposite of Barack Obama's uh, logic. Uh, he would cut taxes for the lower income and, and feed the economy that way. And, uh, Let me ask you a question. Did uh, Clinton also cut spending? Uh, Clinton uh, did cut spending uh, against his will, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because you had uh, the um, the um, uh, Newt Gingrich Congress, as we called it, right. back back when he was Speaker of the House, uh, drove the government. They had a standoff then that resulted in, in two different government shutdowns. And the upside of those shutdowns is when the government shut down, they can't spend money. So, uh, so the government saved a lot of money during that time. Uh, and, and after that was settled, uh, we saw the boom take off for a number of different reasons. You know, there was the dot-com uh, bubble, et cetera, that uh, happened. Uh, but the, uh, you, you did ha have a boom as a result of uh, uh, taxes and reduced spending uh, and a balanced budget. Uh, Let me ask you this. Do you think that Keynes was right that you can increase prosperity by increasing government spending? Well, I think uh, he was right, uh, and I think even the non-Keynesians will uh, admit that uh, there's little question that, uh, that in a recession a big problem is not enough money in the economy, and if the uh, public sector or private sector can't produce it, then one way to, to uh, raise the economy is with public spending. Um, uh, however, uh, the problem is uh, getting off of that public spending cycle and back to the private sector again is not easy. And on that It's point, addictive, right? <laughs> addictive spending. It is addictive, so much so that even conservatives like George W. Bush did it. Right. <laughs> and that was so what happened. let me ask you this. Well, we wound up with a deeper deficit, and then uh, 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 Obama came into office, and uh, he was. Uh, well, Brent to a lot of troubles trying to do the public spending he wanted to do because Republicans blocked it. So that, that's where we are now, where the, where the uh, public sector uh, is uh, at present beginning to recover, but because so much, uh, uh, excuse me, the private sector is beginning to recover, but the public spending has been reduced so much uh, that it has kept unemployment high. Uh, and so we're at that kind of a stalemate right now where I think the, the Washington uh, 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 the uh, Washington stalemate has caused uh, uh, economic problems. When the government increases its spending uh, according to the Keynesian pr uh, prescription, where do they get the money? Uh, the, well, you know, the nice thing about the federal government is they can make as much money as they want to. So when they print money, does that make each dollar that the citizens hold worth less? Uh, in theory, it should, but you, you got to include in that theory the fact that the U.S. dollar, like the uh, British pound, uh, is such a respected currency that um, nobody really knows uh, how many dollars you would have to create, print, uh, before the actual value would begin to decline, simply because they're so respected. And, and this reveals one of the fundamentals of the, uh, 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 of the uh, economy and economic theory, the magic of, of, of the economy. It, economy is mostly state of mind. If you believe and I believe that this piece of paper has value, then it's got value, as long as you can, you can trade it for something. And so uh, this is why you get these interesting arguments uh, that are dividing the Republican Party right now, like Ron Paul, for example, wants to go back to the gold standard. Right. So let me ask you this. 
why is counterfeiting illegal? Because it is. Yeah, but, but, laws against it. But, but why do they make counterfeiting illegal? Because they uh, want the uh, money to have uh, value, and that they, if anybody can print it, uh, that uh, begins to break up, erode that confidence that people have in it. Now, again, economy is state of mind. Right. So each dollar that the counterfeiter produces reduces the other the value of the other dollars out there because now there's more dollars pursuing the same amount of goods, right? Again, in, again, in theory, uh, in fact. So doesn't that right? But doesn't that happen the same when the government prints billions and trillions of dollars? I mean, a, a counterfeiter can only produce a few million, can hardly affect the value of all the currency, but a, a government can like uh, Zimbabwe, for example, or Argentina, you know, the, the printing, or Germany, the Reichmann Republic. Mm -hmm. In all these cases, by printing so much money, the, the, value, the, the value of the currency went down because there's so much, so much uh, currency out there and the same amount of goods, so each good demands more, a higher price. So that's, what, that's what they call inflation, right? In theory, but well, that's one big difference. We're not Zimbabwe. Right. And I've been to Zimbabwe. Right. Oh, I, I imagine you have. But what I'm saying is, uh, it, it, is it true that is it true that the more dollars, each dollar that you print, additional, devalues the other the other dollars out there because there's this more dollars pursuing the same amount of goods. Again, in theory, but in in practice, not necessarily. Uh, because uh, inflation uh, or deflation uh, can occur independent of how many actual dollars you are printing. For example, there are, there are other fact. There may be other factors, right? But uh, uh, other things being equal, that's the case, right? It's uh, just a matter of logic. Well, obviously, things aren't equal, so we're talking theory. Okay. So you think that this is true in theory, but in practice, it doesn't work. So in practice, you can print as many dollars as you want, and the currency will not devalue. Well, what's the value of a theory? Uh, it, it is a guide. Uh, and then you, you include certain factors to apply that theory to reality. Uh, reality, think all things are not equal. Uh, you've got a lot of, uh, of different factors that are involved. So yes, in theory, the more money you print, the less uh, value that money ought to have. But there's other factors involved that can prop up the value of money or deflate it, uh, depending. Right now is a good example where the, uh, the Federal Reserve uh, is offering money to banks at zero interest rates. Because, why? Because they're trying to, uh, to, to uh, uh, raise the value of the dollar. We're getting more money into the economy, and their fear is inflation, which you're talking about, that you know, you know, the, more, the more they print, the less it's going to be worth. But so far, how, how long have we had zero interest rates for several years now without a hint of inflation? Uh, maybe a hint, <laughs> but not enough to, to, uh, for them to be worried about it yet. So nobody really knows uh, how many dollars uh, you, you can print uh, before you actually have inflation or a, a de devaluation of the currency. Right. So when you print a, a X amount of extra dollars, that that is true that each dollar will be worth less. And so that is like a tax on money. So while you're, while you're sleeping, each dollar that you hold is depreciated, just like the, the counterfeiter. Right now it's not. Well, there is... A, the inflation rate is going up slowly, right? Not right now. It's not uh, going up to 3 or 4%, and uh, the target, I thought, the Federal Reserve was 2%? If it was, then we, the, the Federal Reserve would be raising interest rates, but they're not yet. They, they're not really worried about inflation yet. Well, let me put it this way. Have you been to the uh, supermarket lately, to the grocery store? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't look at the prices. <laughs> I, I used to shop at Fresh Fields before the recession. Now I shop at Safeway, so... <laughs> That's all. Okay. I don't want to look at the well, prices too much, though. It's good to be and if I were running for office, I would, because reporters would be asking me oh. about the price of bread, so I'd have to tell them. But, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is, uh, uh, I uh, uh, mainly, uh, 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 that's, you know, food's one of those things that uh, I buy because I have to, but I <laughs> we're, it, right? we're buying cheaper now than we used to, that's shall we say. Well, I, I appreciate your willingness to discuss this issue thoroughly, and this is what I like about uh, your discussions at the McLaughlin Group. 